Good Morning Revolution, and welcome to Good Morning Revolution. Rosanna, Michael, and Anita. Good morning, Good morning Revolution. Revolution. Good morning. Hey, that's better. That's, that, <laughs> that's the kind of pep in your step, the kind of verb in your swerve that I like to, I like to hear early in the morning. Well, it's been, once again, a, a, a big week. I mean, every week is big in these uh, <clears throat> uh, days and times. You know, things are happening at such a, a, a quick pace. Uh, before you blink twice, I was just saying, you know, you grow up and you, before you blink twice, you're an old person. <laughs> That's kind of the way I feel. I remember when I was a young person with hair. Oops, sometimes I take my hat off. And, and, and now things are just moving at such a blinding speed because of the internet. And of course, you know, I'm in New York City, so things move, move fast anyway. That's where they coined the phrase, that a New York minute. In any event, um, it just happened this week that the United States uh, closed the big air base in Afghanistan, Rosanna, officially bring an end to the 20 year occupation of that country. That's a good thing, no? Well, yeah, obviously it is a good thing. It must be a huge relief to the Afghan people, first and foremost. Uh, I, I'm really concerned because Biden says he's not really pulling out. He's, he's leaving you know, through something, I think it was $3 billion to help with uh, security and things like that. That means that these uh, security men and our men and women are not going to be held accountable for whatever happens in Afghanistan. And so, um, I, you know, I don't, I, I can't celebrate uh, completely because of, you know, what it means to the Afghan people still having <clears throat> U.S. presence and not allowing them to build their country, rebuild the country, and, and determine for themselves mm -hmm. the future. That's very true, very true. But at least they get this, uh, the, the biggest presence of the troops out. And, and there are going to be a lot of contractors who remain, uh, Michael. And uh, that's, that's not a good thing. And they've given up this facade of nation building. So that's important as well, um, don't you think? I think so. Um, and as Rosanna was saying, taking troops out, I think that's a plus, not only for the Afghan people, but also, you know, I, I grew up with many young folks who joined the military, not because they wanted to, you know, go help the imperialists, but because it was the only way that they could pay for school or, you know, support a family. Um, a lot of uh, Puerto Rican guys um, that I grew up with, you know, they grew up in Puerto Rico. It's really the only job around, you know, living on the island, unfortunately. And so you have to put yourselves in, in their shoes as well. They're also victims. Um, but warfare is not as traditional, you know, two armies fighting each other as before. The contractors, that you, as you said, are still there. And, you know, the drone strikes and the bombings may continue. So that's, you know, things that we have to continue to, to struggle against. Well, it's way, way past time the United States of America, Anita, gave up this idea that it has to be involved in every single place uh, which really means that they're trying to extract money from every exactly. every single place and and you know maintain military dominance in order to maintain economic dominance and exploit mm -hmm. the rest of the world. You know what I'm saying? That's that's right. the big issue. And, and they it need was, to start cutting cutting that military budget. It was interesting to hear the clips of uh, Rumsfeld saying um uh, the war would last maybe five days or five weeks, and now he's dead, and the the war, the forever war, seems to go on without him. So it's it's just way overdue. Uh, when you look back at where Afghanistan was in uh, in the '70s, it was it was such a, um, I mean, it's just such a waste of of uh, resources and people's lives uh, that has uh, happened there in the last 50 years. Another big development that took place this week was the 100th anniversary of the Communist Party of China. Yeah. Happy birthday, Communist Party of China. That's a, Happy that's anniversary. A, Happy birthday. That's a, that's a big yes. thing. 
I, I read the, uh, we've been participating in some of the anniversary celebrate remotely, you know, via, via Zoom. Rosanna, you were just in Beijing, right? You gave a big speech there uh, the um, other day. Actually, it's uh, going to be aired on the 6th of uh, January. I mean, of July. Uh, yeah. 6th of July. Okay. Yeah. Uh -oh. I, I did the, the video uh, recording of it, and so it'll be coming out on the 6th of July. Um, it's a party summit to talk about our, each party's responsibility for the well-being of its people. Uh, and I think it's gonna be a, a, a really good exchange of, of uh, what's happening throughout the world in the different parties. Um, I've, I've also been watching some of the video clips and listening to uh, some of the speeches on uh, YouTube. You can find them on YouTube. Mm -hmm. And some of the celebrations they've had, they had this huge play about the history of the Communist Party, which is, was, a, I, I wish I would have been there to watch it. It's, it seems just really beautiful. Of course, I don't know, I don't know Chinese, but uh, it seemed powerful enough. But if you watch it on YouTube, it's, uh, they do translate most of it. I, I read uh, Xi Jinping's speech yesterday. I don't know if I just said that or not. That's what happens when you get old. <laughs> you, you say something and you forget it two seconds later. Anyway, I, I, I read his, uh, the, the speech yesterday. One of the things that, that impressed me about it, Anita, was, you know, the, the great pride that the Chinese people have mm. in their history and tradition and culture and contribution to human civilization, you know, they ran like a you know, a red stream throughout that speech, you know, 5,000 year old history and the tremendous uh, humiliation that they felt as a people uh, as a result of European colonialism and intervention, both by Europe and Japan. And, and that they're not standing for that, you know? Mm -hmm. And I think that there's one line in it and, and, and they say, if you think that you are gonna come in here, um, speaking in Youngstown East now, <laughs> you're gonna run into a wall that, of steel that is 1.6 billion people strong. And mm -hmm. hey, they don't, don't, don't even try it, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I think that you can understand, you know, the, that feeling and, and also the great uh, strides that country has made over the past, uh, since the revolution in 1949, no? Mm -hmm. it's, in, it's really, uh, they have been really struggling uh, with imperialism for thousands and thousands of years. So they are familiar and they have made, I'm, I'm sure Dang's speech um, got to the, or Xi's speech got to this, um, but uh, the, the achievements that have just been made in the last few years have been really remarkable. The way that uh, Chinese um, dealt with the COVID uh, pandemic um, is so much more, imp so impressive compared with the rest of the world, especially the capitalist world. Um, and the, the eradication of poverty is just amazing. And the, the, the growth of the, uh, of, uh, the economy there. So I, I think um, we, uh, shouldn't be, uh, we shouldn't let uh, the ruling class of this country, uh, you know, overshadow those, uh, those achievements and, and we should celebrate them along with the Chinese in the, in the, uh, on the anniversary of their uh, party being founded. And, and they said, Michael, that they're now a moderately prosperous socialist country. They set these goals. You know, they speak, you know, in big slogans, uh, uh, slogans, uh, slogan like concepts and terms like the three represents and socialism with Chinese characteristics, the moderate, the prosperous socialist country. Michael, they say that the next stage is going to be a prosperous socialist country and they're going to uh, make it real quick, you know, probably in the next, you know, 30 to 40 years. And already China is the second largest economy on the planet. And that's got U.S. imperialism uh, and European imperialism worried, no? Yeah, and I, and I, what I really respect, as you were saying, kind of the slogans of these goals that they set, 
is that they are very self-critical, you know, in terms of their economy and where they're falling short. Um, and so the, the fact that they say, you know, we're, we don't quite have socialism yet, uh, because it's often referred to as a socialist country or quote unquote communist country, you know, here in the United States. I think that's really, um, I guess, cool on their part and that they, they set these goals and they're very uh, transparent, you know, in terms of the, the, the economic achievements that they've, uh, that they've made in terms of taking, you know, however many million out of poverty uh, and so forth. And so, you know, and I also think they've stepped up their internationalism in this past period. I remember, you know, they were sending different communist parties masks um, and they were requesting, you know, bilateral meetings to discuss, you know, how they can help out and so forth. And so um, I think they're heading in a good direction. I think the world movement's heading in a good direction. They're growing, we're growing, everyone's growing. And so I'm excited to see what this next period um, has in store for China and the world communist movement. You know, this new Cold War business at the NATO summit, you know, they mentioned China. They never mentioned it before. Now they mentioned it three times, Rosanna. And this new Cold War policy, it doesn't help anybody. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a dead end street. You know, they think that they're gonna try to, what happened in Russia, Soviet Union is gonna have, they're, they're gonna exhaust China economically. Well, you know, they, the ruling class of this country just might end up getting exhausted. It's a, it's a folly, a foolish policy. And uh, we need to chart, and that's one of the big problems with the internationalism today. We, we, we need to chart a new international outlook for our country. Don't you think? I, I do. I think, uh, you know, uh, less and less the American people will fall for these kinds of deceptions that this country is this and that country is this. And, and that we have to go and save it. Our country is in, in shambles. We need to save this country first and foremost. And I think more and more people are seeing that let's, you know, let's take care of what's happening in our own home before we go, you know, galloping around the world trying to, you know, with pseudo uh, saving them and causing wars that last 20 years. We should learn from the Afghan war and learn the lessons strongly you know, uh, we talk about how many men and women in the U.S. lost their lives and, and for what, um, you know, and how many millions lost their lives in Afghanistan. And, you know, um, the only ones that got rich are the military industrial complex. Everybody else lost. Everybody else is poor. Everybody else, our infrastructure is a mess. So I think, uh, you know, we need to rethink all of this. Speaking of that, uh, the, uh, in order to rebuild this country, we need to rebuild the uh, working class and we need to rebuild the infrastructure, as you say. And in order to do both of those things, we need to rebuild the trade union movement, Anita. Mm -hmm. and, the, and the PRO Act is, is uh, still doesn't have enough sponsors in the uh, Senate, but the AFL-CIO, I see, has pulled forward a week of seven days of struggle. Seven days of struggle. It's going to be, um, I think, like the 17th of July until the 24th. Seven and mm -hmm. seven. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, I got that's my right. arithmetic right. <laughs> and and uh, and they're calling on demonstrations in, in state capitals all across the country. How's it going in Ohio? Is, 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 uh, I hear there are like a lot of city council resolutions. Anita I think in support of the PRO Act. Exactly. I think there's a lot of excitement for it. Um, uh, we, uh, I know there's some events go happening that week, uh, donuts and coffee and postcard parties uh, about the PRO Act. And we, um, we have, um, been putting pressure on Rob Portman uh, to sign on. Uh, we're, we're not holding our breath uh, for his cooperation in that. Uh, we've got uh, now a Senate race to replace uh, Rob Portman. And I think folks are being, are being asked, well, what about, the, what about labor unions and how to rebuild labor union, unions and rebuild the middle class, in a, the so-called middle class in, in Ohio? Um, finding uh, ways to get good jobs, good union jobs back to uh, the state. 
So I think it's um, I think it's a really important fight in Ohio in particular because this used to be the real uh, bastion of uh, of uh, trade the trade union movement on um, uh, proud history of trade union uh, activity in the state and we really need to get back to to that that power of the working class. Coffee and postcard is that enough, Michael, or 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 or, or do we need a general strike? Now, I know that. You wrote an article that was published on cpusa.org in which you criticized calls for a general strike as being premature and immature. Am I wrong to raise that issue now? Um, I don't think I wrote that article alone, if I remember correctly. <laughs> um, <laughs> I kind of froze there. Well, I mean, so, but, but, but more pressure has to be put because the Chamber of Commerce, they're not going to, you know, allow the PRO Act to be passed. Uh, you know, they might grab your donuts and throw your, throw the postcards in the, in the trash can. I'm back Michael? now. Sorry. Yeah. Oh, you disappeared for a Yeah, I, I, okay. my screen was frozen. No, um, I think, you know, we have to really be in touch with what the conditions are. You know, if, if we were in the position for a general strike, that'd be different. But, you know, we have to meet people where they are. We have to build up the labor movement in order for there to be a general strike if there ever is going to be, you know, a successful one. And so I think like right now, uh, the situation in New York is, you know, fast food workers, the minimum wage here in New York City is $15 an hour and Chipotle workers are getting paid 11. And so the first step would be, you know, taking Chipotle to court, organizing these people into unions. I know um, SEIU 32BJ is working really hard on that. Uh, they've had de Blasio and the mayor show up at their uh, demonstrations and rallies, standing in solidarity with them. And so I think, you know, revolution and, you know, the pro we were talking about China and how it's, a, you know, a process. It's not overnight. It's, it's a marathon, not a sprint. And I think we have to understand that, that it's a process. We have to be patient. And it's all about the struggle. You know, the struggle, the struggle um, isn't everything, of course, you know, the revolution will eventually get us there. Um, but we have to... Uh, build revolutionary potential through the struggle. And so I think that takes a big form of this summer of solidarity that we're preparing for, you know, around the PRO Act and around uh, the, the uh, For the People's Act and so on. Wait a minute, are you calling me a petty bourgeois radical? <laughs> then I, I, I'm like in the middle of an infantile disorder or something. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, well don't, don't answer. Don't answer, I don't, I don't want to hear. Uh, I do not want to hear the answer. Uh, Donald Rumsfeld died. Uh, Bill Cosby got out of jail. And Britney Spears did not win her case for uh, the, the right to uh, take control of the end. Uh, what's it called? The conservatorship or something like that? Uh, any comments, uh, <laughs> Anita? Yes, yes, I have a comment. I think Britney Spears ought to go on strike. I mean, I think she should be organizing her own. Uh, she does make a lot of money for um, other people in her little organization. Um, and she's uh, working all this time. And I guess she's earning money to, um, you know, that goes back to uh, the person who's in charge of her estate. Uh, or whatever her life. Um, so I think I think there's a person who should uh, you know strike right now. All right, just go uh, home. Rosanna, working. Well, I think uh, you know. I don't like to celebrate people's deaths, but uh, I'm glad we have one less imperialist, one less greedy monster in the name of Rumsfeld. Uh, I. You know, I, I, I only judged the, the Cosby case by the fact that there were 60 women who came and accused him. It's not like one or two, it's 60. And I think that, you know, logic tells us that he's guilty. So I, I think about all the women who were violated, uh, all those 60 women and other women that it triggers, you know, uh, that have been violated by others and, it, and these moments really trigger them to, uh, you know, relive that, that violation, that attack. So, um, you know, we still have some ways to go. 
but uh, I always firmly believe that, you know, life makes you pay for what you do at some form or another. It's, you know, so I'll leave it at that. But that gives me hope that Trump, before he leaves this earth, yeah. is going to pay for his <laughs> misogyny, his assault on women. Exactly. And no, I think you make a, something happen there that was uh, not right, the 60 cases and God knows uh, what, what more. And, and the fight can continue against all forms of repression and oppression and discrimination and and in and inequality and Michael, we were at the LGBT, the Queer Liberation March. That's another area where, where we've got some a ways to go. We we traveled a bit, but we still got a ways to go in that fight. And what a beautiful militant uh, celebration! And 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 on the one hand, and protest on the other. Last last Sunday, and we were there representing. No. We were. We had our banners uh, and our signs. You know, it's okay to be gay and a communist, communist for queer liberation. And mm -hmm. we had a really positive response. You know, people came up to us and accepted our literature, you know, our literature celebrating Harry Hay, informing people about uh, the history of the LGBTQ liberation movement and the Communist Party's role in it. Um, the most emotional part for me was that we had a, a, an a elderly lesbian couple came up to us and she gave us a hug and she took a picture with us and she said, it means so much that you're here because when I was in the party back in the day, it wasn't that easy to be open, you know? And she was referring to, you know, the, the unfortunately our history with the lavender scare and everything that, you know, that entailed. And so I think we're moving in a positive direction. It's good to include and fight for the liberation of all workers and oppressed people. I think that's the only way to do it. And you have the last word. Well, we hope everybody stays safe and strong this weekend. Celebrate the 4th of July and, and, and remember that the struggle for independence and, and liberation didn't end there. It was a step and continued in the Civil War and, and it's through the Jim Crow and the overthrow of Reconstruction. And I'm not gonna give a history lesson. Don't worry, Anita. Uh, but you get the point, and and we're still fighting. We're still fighting, and and we will be back here next week, uh, same place, same station, uh, continuing the fight. So stay strong, stay safe, stay in the fight. See everybody uh, next week. Bye everyone. Bye. Bye everybody.